Hello, this is Daniel from soundheadquarters.com. In today's very special full length video, I am showing you the step by step process of this entire custom home studio build we did. We did a full live room, full control room. Here is a sneak peek at the finished product. I broke this whole video into chapters because this is quite long. So if there are any chapters that pertain just to your home studio build, I broke it all up so it's nice and easy to skip ahead to whatever you would like to see. But for those of you that would like to join us for the entire journey start to finish, I really appreciate everyone watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, let's get that engagement up. Love that everyone is having a good time watching these videos and reaching out to me, it's so cool. Love that people are getting something out of this and it is just so awesome to be able to bring this stuff to you guys. So here is a little sneak peek and let's get into chapter one. So this is the clean slate and the live room paneling. So here is what we are starting off with. This is when my client just got possession of his home here in Guelph, Ontario. And the very first thing that he wanted to add was the basement recording studio. He is in a band, in a rock band, so this was an important part of his home to have somewhere that he can rehearse with his band and record as well. So this is what will become the live room. And you can see it's a nice walkout. And that room right there is what will become the control room. So this is just giving you guys a look at what we are starting with right before we get into the very first stage of this entire build, which is the wood cladding. Since this client is in a rock band, they are used to performing in studios and rehearsal spaces that have a lot of wood in them. So they are used to that kind of warmer room tone that comes with a room that has a lot of wood. So we are using this pine tongue and groove paneling to clad all of the walls. This is going to get really reduce the drywall surface area in the room and just help us add a bit of that wood warm room tone to the space. So I'm measuring out the distance between the top of the baseboards and the ceiling and I can leave myself about a quarter inch of space just to make sure that these nail in very easily because we are going to trim and add custom lighting where these panels meet the ceiling. So it's not important that this board touches the ceiling. We can have a little bit of space there and that just makes the installation process a lot easier. So I am tacking these in with my 18 gauge brad nailer and here's a little close up. You can see that tongue and groove slides right in and I'm doing my 18 gauge brad nail right in that tongue area right in the corner so that way as the next plank slides in the next plank hides the nail holes. So that keeps everything looking nice and professional and clean and I'm using my laser level as I go around every few boards just to make sure that I'm still nice and level as we go around the room. So I'm using my table saw here just to make notches to work around this door casing, the window casing, all of the electrical outlets, anywhere that we need to work around to get this wood cladding to be nice and clean around the room. I'm using my table saw, my miter saw when I have to, uh, my exacto knife when I have to, um, but mainly the table saw. And you can see this little piece here to work around that door casing. And these little detail areas, it's important that we take our time on this because this client is going to live with this for a long, long time in his brand new house. We want this to be very, very as clean as possible and just attention to detail is very important with what we do here. Uh, so you can see that electrical outlet we need to work around. So I just scribed that onto the next board there and I'm going to cut that out on my table saw and you can see that cut around the outlet. So anywhere that I have an electrical outlet or an electrical switch, once I cut around with the paneling, you can see I just unscrew the outlet. I can pull it forward by that little quarter inch and screw it back in uh, to the box there. So it keeps the outlet nice and stable. And then when we add our trim piece again, it's gonna look nice and professional on top of the wood cladding and it's gonna hide all of that, all of that exposed hole there. So just getting above the door opening here and just chatting with the client there and Continuing my way around the room and then I have this big bulkhead here that I can work around with the table saw and then all of my next cuts will be a little bit shorter. And here when I got to that very end piece, I just scribed on the back with the pencil, cut it on the table saw and then I have that piece that meets up perfectly with where the wall turns and that is where we decided with the client to end the wood paneling for the live room. There you can see the whole live room is clad and now we are ready to start chapter two. Chapter two, this is the control room wood cladding. And then we're gonna get into some of the 
framing as well for the control room. So here you can see the blank slate for the control room. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna wood clad this room. However, since we are doing custom wall um, integrated base traps that work into an acoustic wall, we are gonna get everything framed out on the walls first. And then that way we will do our wood cladding around that. Uh, since there's going to be a lot of surface area in this room that will not require the wood paneling since it will have the fabric and acoustic insulation and you will see that right now. So we have that one intrusion of a small bulkhead in the right corner of this control room. Uh, you can see this in one of my previous videos. Um, we did just the control room base trap framing in one of our previous videos if you want to go check that out. But we are cutting up the corner frames right now for the space trap. These ended up being just over three feet wide and just over around five feet tall. So I'm screwing these together. I'm using three inch construction screws. I'm doing two screws per corner. And once I get this screwed together, you can see how these are gonna fit into the corners of the control room. These are what's gonna make up the main frames for our base traps, for our front and left front wall base traps in this control room here. So you can see you got the frames all built. I set up my laser in that rear bulkhead of the room because we agreed with the client that we are gonna line everything up with that front wall window casing. That way we just have a nice professional finished look to the whole room once it's all done. So I'm using those same three inch construction screws, lining up my frame in the corner. You can see how that frame still fits even though that bulkhead is protruding into the corner. And once we insulate and fabric this, um, we're gonna have a nice finished flat face on these base traps. So I'm just measuring my corners, making sure that when I screw this in, it's equal on both sides and I have that nice 45 degree angle. And you can see we decided to keep these a little bit off the floor so that way our client maintains all of his electrical access. And it also is gonna give us somewhere to add our conduit for the custom wall plate that we are doing way later in the video. So now we are framing out the larger wall sections of these acoustic walls. These are six feet long and matching the height of the base traps. And these are just going to screw right into the wall and meet up with the base trap frames on the left and right hand sides. So once again, same construction method, just screwing these together with our three inch construction screws, getting my laser set up again. And I'm just getting some screws um, already ready, just so it makes it easier for me to install this by myself. And once I have that secured on both sides, then I'm going to go through and mark out where all the studs are. And I'm just going to get a few, few screws into the studs. Uh, just to make sure that these are nice and secure. You can see here I marked out on the wall with my stud finder where all of the studs are around the control room. And we don't have to hit every single stud. We just want to get a few screws into the studs here just to make sure that everything is nice and secure. We're not going to have any rattles and everything is nice and strong. Now that we have our wall and base trap frames put in, now we can continue on with the wood paneling. Since this paneling will not be within the acoustic walls, we can just go above and below. And it's really important that I use my laser uh, to make sure that the top and bottom pieces, since they're not connected, they all still lined up as we went around the room. Because uh, if we had any variance, uh, once we get back to a spot where we can do a full piece, it would not have looked right. Um, we would have had some gaps and we do not want that. So it's important we take our time and just work our way around the room. Once again, cutting around all the outlets, everything we have to. So there's the final look, and that brings chapter two to a conclusion, or chapter one, not sure, uh, but that brings this chapter to a conclusion, and let's get into the next one. Chapter three, this is the wood conditioner, stain, and clear coat. So we masked off all the way around our live room, um, masked off all of the trim all the electrical outlets because uh, the first step that we are going to do before we stain all of this wood we are going to add a wood conditioner uh, this is a pre-stained wood conditioner um, this is usually commonly used on these soft woods especially with this pine uh, it was important for the client that we used this wood conditioner before we applied the stain uh, so i'm just applying this on with a big brush and a pole just to make it easier for me to apply and you can see how this kind of soaks into the wood and this just allows that pine to accept the stain in a more consistent way and to make sure we don't get any blotchiness or any inconsistencies in the stain. This is the stain we decided to go with. The client wanted to do a nice dark stain. This is uh, like a dark walnut color and we're just going to apply this to the walls. I'm using 
the brush to apply this. And once it's soaked for a couple minutes, then I'm going back with my rag and just wiping up any of the excess stain. So we're gonna work our way around the entire room, getting everything stained. And there you can see when I go in with my rag just to wipe up the excess. And that gives us our color. And as more time goes on and the stain really penetrates into this wood, we get a nice rich tone. There you can see the wood is all stained. Now that the room is all stained, we are ready for our clear coat. We went with a satin clear coat or a semi-gloss clear coat on this wood. I'll give you a shot of what we ended up using here in a moment. And we are getting the control room done as well. So exact same process. We're just going around with our pre-stain first, getting all of that wood nice and conditioned, ready to accept the stain. And then we can go around the whole room, getting everything all stained up. And we're doing our best not to get any smudges anywhere, but if there's any spots in the ceiling, we, we did hit a couple spots in the ceiling and stuff, but, and on the trim, but as we go around, the very final steps of this job is all of the touch-up paint and any sort of final touches, cleaning up anything we had to. So here is the clear coat that we used. This is a matte clear coat. Uh, so it's gonna be not very reflective uh, when the light hits it. Uh, so this is just getting applied the same way, just I'm using the brush and the pole and just getting this clear coat on. You can see that nice, the difference between just the raw stained wood and once it's clear coated and once it dries as well, it dries to a more matte finish. And this really made the grain pop, really made that stain look super nice and looked even better the next day after everything soaked in properly. There's a nice look at the control room, or the live room rather, all clear coated. And we're going to do the same here in the control room, just working our way around with the brush, getting everything all applied correctly. And there's a look at the control room. This brings a conclusion to this chapter. Stay tuned for the next one. So here is chapter four. This is the custom live room lighting that we ended up doing. So these trim pieces, the first thing they're getting tacked into the wall using my 18 gauge brad nailer. These are pieces of one by two. This is just one by two SPF pine. This wood will not be visible. Uh, so we didn't have to stain this wood. It's gonna get covered in a trim that will be stained. This is just to accept the light track that we will be installing around the perimeter of this live room. So you can see I worked around the whole upper perimeter, installing this one by two wood, just tacking it in, working around my corners there. Here's a little close up, and you'll see this is where our aluminum track is going to screw right into, and that's where we are going to stick our LED light strip, and then that will all get covered with a trim to make everything look nice and professional. Here is the aluminum channel that we are using. This is just an extru extruded aluminum channel commonly available on Amazon. Here are the clips that screw will screw into the wood. These are like the little plastic end caps for where you start and finish. And the screws all came in the kit. And here I'm just gonna show you how this is gonna slot and screw nicely into that channel uh, because this channel is about three quarters of an inch wide. And so is our one by two by eight that we tacked in around the whole upper perimeter of the room. And so we're gonna get that screwed in this not only is providing us a nice spot um, for our custom lighting, but it's also closing up that gap between the wood paneling and the ceiling. And you'll see when we add in our trim at the very end, uh, the nice professional look that this is gonna give us. So we're working around the whole room here, screwing in those little clips, which hold in the aluminum channel. There you can see whenever I get to a corner there, I'm just adding the miter cut. So I'm using an angle gauge where I have to, but most of these angles were just 45 degrees. So just getting these cut where I have to. There you can see this angle going around a little HVAC bulkhead here on the right side of the, of the live room. You can see where that 45 degree angle just meets up nicely. And that's what we are working on as we work our way around the room. Getting this screwed in. And this is what's gonna provide the channel for us to stick our LED light strip in. So now that we have the channel screwed in all the way around the full perimeter of the live room, you can see this is where the light is going to plug in at the very end into that outlet right there. 
Here's the light strip we are using. We are using a Govee light strip. This is a, a 50 foot light strip. Uh, we used the 50 footers. So we were able to do one continuous strip around the whole live room here. So I'm starting on that right side and just carefully sticking this in, taking my time when I go around the corners there just to make sure I'm not binding anything or that no actual light on the actual light strip is in a spot where it's in a corner or there's not gonna be any extra pressure or anything on, on these lights. Taking my time, making sure everything's stuck around. Here you can see how it looks. We tested everything out, plugged it in. And this adds quite a bit of light into the room here. Um, this is without the trim piece covering it up. Uh, once we add that trim piece, it's gonna direct the light more downwards onto the wall, which is what the client wanted, just to have some nice ambient style lighting uh, within the live room here. And you're gonna see how these lights light up the panels uh, once those are installed later in the video. So this is the light diffuser. This is just like a milky white plastic that clips into that aluminum channel. This helps uh, get rid of just all of those little dots of the uh, LED being visible. So it just literally just presses right into that channel. There you can see the difference between where the light diffuser is and where it's just the raw LED strip. This is just a small little touch that helps diffuse the light and just makes it look more consistent uh, once our final trim piece is on there. So I can just cut this to size with my scissors. And once again, anywhere I need to do a miter cut, I'm just cutting it on a 45, wherever I have to, and pressing it into that aluminum channel. Here is the trim pieces that we are going to use. This is one by four knotty pine, and we did all the same preconditioning and wood stain and clear coat on these pieces of wood. And you will see how these are going to trim up nicely. These are just gonna sit right into right against the ceiling and can tack right into our one by two pine that we added in there. Had a small bend in this piece, so I had to just really, really get some leverage with my, my hammer here before I tacked it in place. And using the same 18 gauge brad nailer, working my way around the room, getting all of our trim pieces installed. And you can see how this provides just a nice finished product, a nice final touch. Got my kids there helping me out today and uh, getting everything tacked in there, working my way around the room there. And here's the final look. So anywhere that we have a cut joint on this trim, we're gonna go back in with our stain and our clear coat, make sure everything is nice and nice and professional. There you can see just how that light is now more so directed downwards um, on the walls. And this is gonna have a really nice effect, especially once we put our acoustic panels up. So here's a little look at the lighting, all the different colors. This chapter is the acoustic panels and the clouds for the live room. We're gonna get these built using our two by two by eight lumber. And here's a little shot of our lumber and I'm gonna get these cut to size. So for our panels, all of our long pieces are gonna be cut to four feet and all of our horizontal places uh, pieces are gonna be cut to just over 27 inches. That provides an interior dimension within our panel frames of two by four feet, which is the exact size of our acoustic insulation. So I'm getting these screwed together. I'm using my three inch construction screws. I'm using the ground as a guide. And here's a little close up of that. This is a very important step because all of these frames are gonna get cut on the router. So you can see I'm hugging closer to the upper side of that panel, making sure my screws don't get close to the side that's on the ground. Cause that side is gonna go onto the router table and we do not want that router hitting those screws. So we are keeping these screws closer to the back side of the panel and that's gonna make sure that we have enough space to router these frames. And that's what's gonna give us that very nice 45 degree chamfered edge around our whole acoustic panel frames. So that is the panels right there. Got them all finished up. Now we are ready for the router. So here is the router table. You can see that 45 degree bevel that that router bit is gonna put on there. And so turn that on and now we can get to routering. So I do two passes every single face. So the first pass just gets rid, uh, rid of the majority of the bulk of the wood. And then the second pass is the nice finishing pass to make sure everything is nice and cut well and consistent down the full length. Of course, after every pass, I check to make sure that there was no big tear out. And if there is any spots that we have to fix up, then I can just cut a new piece of lumber, screw it in and router it again. 
So now that our panel frames are cut, now I'm building our cloud frames. These cloud frames ended up being just slightly smaller than our panel frames. Our, the final dimension of our panel frames were 27 inches wide, and the final dimension of our cloud frames are 24 inches wide. So these cloud frames just slightly smaller than our panel frames. The full construction was the exact same. So there are our panel frames ready for the routering. And getting my panel frames, the rear upholstery on them. So I'm just using a black polyester fabric here, getting them cut to size and just stapling these in with my pneumatic stapler. I'm using quarter inch staples. Uh, this pneumatic stapler uses the standard T50 staples like your handheld stapler would. I'm gonna make sure that I sand all of the edges here. This is just gonna make sure that when I stretch the fabric, that there's no burrs or splinters or anything that's gonna poke out of the fabric and that uh, the fabric will lay nice and flat. So we, the client decided to use this really nice uh, vanilla colored velvet. Uh, this is like a luxury velvet that we sourced locally here. And the contrast between that kind of nice creamy colored velvet against the dark walnut on the walls ended up looking super nice for this client. We're really happy with how this turned out. Here's the acoustic insulation we're using. This is Rockwool Comfort Board 80. This is a rigid acoustic insulation, and this can just press fit into the panel frames. And I'm just using my knife there just to trim anything if I have to, and I can upholster these panels. If you want a more in-depth video about how I upholster my acoustic panels, please feel free to check out any of the other panel building videos on my channel. I have tons of videos showing all the close-up detail of how I upholster these panels. And now we can get into adding the French cleat, which is how we're gonna mount these panels around the room. We decided to go with a French cleat, which is essentially just a 45 degree angle cut in opposite directions. I'll show you a close up view of that. So you can see we used that same one by four wood that we used for our lighting trim, but we cut it on the table saw in half on a 45 degree to make that French cleat. So you can see that 45 degree angle is nailed into the wall. And then this opposite side of the 45 degree angle is gonna nail into the rear side of the panel. And that is how the panels are just gonna mount into this track. This was a cool detail for this client. I wanted to be able to have these panels to be able to be moved around the room for this client, to be able to be um, removed very easily, to give this client modularity in his live room sound. Um, as this band uh, records, they can add more panels if they want a more dead room sound, and if they want a liver room sound, they can take panels off the wall and they can slide them around this track just to really customize their live room for however they are recording or rehearsing that day. So this is me tacking in the French cleat on the panel side of the frames. I'm just getting these tacked in and I'm tacking them in on the top and the bottom because the top of course will link into that French cleat and the bottom is going to give us the spacer so that it sits nice and flat top and bottom against the wall. So there you can see that very first panel getting put onto the frames or onto the French cleat rather. And here's Christian and I just getting these panels put up around, around the room. And here's a cool look at the panels all installed. So you can see how that light really hits off the top frames of those panels. And with that 45 degree chamfered edge, this just makes the panels really pop in the room. Gives us a really, really cool look. Uh, client was super happy with it and so was I. Um, just a really cool kind of custom touch for this client's room. Here's another look at the lighting going around the room here. And now we can get into getting these clouds all finished up. So while Christian is staining the wood trim for our control room, I am routering all of these cloud frames. And there you can see that nice 45 degree chamfered edge that the router puts on our frames. And now it's ready for me to go around and sand, make sure we get rid of all of those splinters and have a nice smooth surface for us to stretch our upholstery around. So taking my time going around, getting everything sanded up nice, making sure that there are no more splinters and now we are ready for the upholstery. So exact same deal as our panel frames, getting the rear upholstery cut and stapled on first. And now I'm just marking out with Christian around the whole live room here. We ended up doing seven clouds in this live room and getting everything marked out. This is the most important step. We want to really take our time with this measurement uh, because if these clouds do not line up, then we're going to have unnecessary holes in this client's ceiling. We do not want that. 
These are the drywall anchors that we are using to support our clouds. You can see these are rated at 63 pounds and these have that nice threading in them. These screw right into the drywall and these are very strong. So once we have our holes all marked out, I can drill these right in. You can pre-drill pre these with a small hole if you like. Um, I just kind of used my uh, pencil to really dig in uh, a starting point and then they can just screw in with the threads. Um, and you can see I'm using my screw hooks there uh, to screw those in and those hooks are going to be going into the cloud frames as well and that is how we're going to support these clouds. So you can see using my laser, super important, once I got the hardware in the front of the room installed, I cross-referenced with the laser to the hardware measurements I had in the back of the room. That's just to make sure that as we look down the live room that all of our clouds are going to line up in a nice straight line. Everything's going to be nice and consistent down the room. And also if the client wants to add clouds in the very rear end of the live room at a later date, since all of our hardware is in a nice straight line along the laser, all we would have to do is set up the laser again, add more holes in the rear side of the room and we could add more clouds at a later date. So you can see we're using our laser in both directions to make sure all of this hardware lines up perfectly with each other. This is the most important step for these clouds. We really wanna make sure that this hardware is nice and straight and consistent and that we are able to get everything screwed into the wall nicely. We're going to upholster these cloud frames now. And once everything is upholstered, we can get our screw hooks installed in the cloud frames. Trimming off the excess fabric there. So I'm going in a few inches on both sides. I did two inches on both sides of these clouds, or three inches rather, using a small, just a small drill bit to pre-drill a little bit so it makes it easier for me to screw those screw hooks in. And now I did use a little bit of chain on the screw hooks. That's just to help me swing these panels up. And once I had it up in the air there, I was able to remove the chain and then just go directly hook to hook. If I was trying to hang these just with the hooks at first with no chain, um, they kind of, it can bind a little bit when it's hook to hook. And I just want to make sure there's as little stress on those, con or on those drywall anchors as possible. So I just used a few link of chain just to hang them. And you wouldn't have to do this if you had a second pair of hands. I just did that since it was just by myself hanging all of these. But there you can see I'm going around the whole live room, getting these clouds all mounted up. This is the control room insulation, upholstery, and trim. So we are using that same Rockwell Comfort Board 80, the rigid acoustic insulation. And I'm using just some drywall screws. These are not structural. This is just so that the insulation won't fall out as we're installing this and that it won't ever poke into the fabric once we upholster this. So I'm just using a couple drywall screws just to hold the insulation in place there on the wall. Now we wouldn't have had to do this if this frame was uh, four feet tall. We could have press fit this acoustic insulation inside the frame. But since we are taller than four feet, I'm using those drywall screws. So while Christian is getting all of these trim pieces pre-stained, stained, and clear coated, I can go ahead and finish up the insulation and all of the remaining framing for these base traps. So now I'm just cutting a 45 on both sides. This is gonna begin to build the upper and bottom braces for these base traps. I do have a video on my channel just dedicated to these base trap and acoustic wall com combos. If you want to watch just that portion of this video, feel free to check that out. Uh, so I am just using my pencil here to scribe where I need to cut these so I can get right into that 45 degree corner. And then this brace is going to provide a spot for us to add in some additional bracing which will hold the acoustic insulation in place and it's also going to give us somewhere to staple our fabric to the top and bottom of these base traps so that way we can make sure that that acoustic insulation is not exposed to the air. So you can see I added some bracing on the left and right side and right through the center and then I'm going to add just a few scrap pieces of my wood paneling on top and that's going to just provide just a little platform uh, while we upholster or while we add the insulation rather to these base traps. So just tacking that in with my brad nailer. And all of this doesn't need to look pretty because this will all be hidden by the insulation and fabric and trim. This is just kind of thinking ahead and making sure we have somewhere to 
tack our fabric and support our insulation. So you can see I added some additional bracing here. I just used my scrap wood planks right on the rear side of that frame. This is what's gonna hold the rigid Rockwell Comfort Board 80 and then that whole interior corner of the cavity is gonna get filled with Rockwell Safe and Sound. So we're using two different densities of Rockwell products in these base traps. It's gonna help us get some good absorption and there you can see me adding those bracing again just to make sure that our rigid acoustic insulation is going to sit nicely and if you push up against it it's not going to push inside the frame it'll always remain right where it is going ahead getting some of these trim pieces cut on the table saw in advance with christian so that he can stain those 45 degree end pieces and apply the clear coat that way when we are ready for the trim everything's all good to go here is that very rear bulkhead base trap frame. This frame, since we are using the corner as the rear side of it, you can see how that trim piece is gonna meet up nicely with the bottom edge of that bulkhead. And same thing on the top edge. These frames only need to be rectangular. Uh, so once we found, found out exact size needs to be, I'm going ahead and getting those base trap frames cut and screwed together while Christian is getting the Rockwell Safe and Sound all cut into triangular shapes so that we can stack it inside the base trap cavities. So we're just getting that cut to size. And then we can go ahead and put that into the base trap walls. There's our triangle. And there you can see we can just stack that right inside. And we started up with this right side. So we're doing two separate triangles because of that little bulkhead that's protruding into that corner there. But on the left side of the control room, uh, we can just cut one large triangle to insulate that interior cavity. So while Christian's working on that, I am working on this upper bulkhead base trap frame. So each of our long pieces are getting cut to four feet, the exact same length, length as our acoustic insulation, so it fits nice in the frame. And then our smaller sizes were around 10 inches for these frames. Exact same construction style, just two screws, two construction screws on each corner, getting this all screwed together and just attaching my frames together as we go along this entire bulkhead. So it ended up being all of these four foot frames. Now I'm getting all of my marks so I can make sure I apply this bulkhead on a nice 45 degree angle. And that way our final trim is gonna meet up nicely with the bottom of that bulkhead as we go along the room. And once that frame is all screwed in, using our exact same construction screws, you can see that small frame just to finish up at the edge there. Now it's ready for insulation. Now, exact same concept, Rockwell safe and sound goes inside the interior cavity. And then we wanna make sure that we're leaving space for right within that two inch frame for us to press fit our rigid acoustic insulation. That gives us a nice flat surface for our fabric to go on top of. There you can see that uh, that base trap is ready for the rigid insulation now. So I'm just getting it cut to size and I can press it in. So you can see how that bracing that we added in earlier is gonna prevent this rigid acoustic insulation from ever being able to push into the frame. Uh, it's gonna make sure that in the event that anyone ever bumps up against this or pushes it with their hand or whatever, that acoustic rigid insulation is gonna stay exactly where it is, giving us a nice flat surface for our fabric to go right on top of. Here's a look at the control room, all insulated. So we have our Rockwell safe and sound behind that rigid acoustic insulation, giving us two different densities for, for absorbing inside those base traps. So Christian's all done with clear coating and staining, getting all of our trim pieces ready. Now we're ready to start applying the trim pieces around the control room. So first trim pieces, just like the same way that we applied our trim pieces uh, for the light track in the live room, uh, there is no light track in the control room, so we are just using that one by two lumber uh, to trim where the wood cladding meets the ceiling. Just getting some of those pieces put in before I upholster. Now we are stretching out this fabric. I am taking my time as I go along, working my way uh, from one side to the other and stretching this fabric as I go along to really make sure that this fabric lays nice and flat. And this is a time that you really want to pay close attention to detail, uh, make sure our staples are in a nice straight line, that way our wood trim will cover up all of those staple marks. And once it's all stapled in, I can cut off the excess and then it is ready for the trim. So getting that long bulkhead 
upholstered. Same thing, making my way, making sure that everything is all tensioned equally and there's no wrinkles or anything weird going on. We wanna make sure this fabric lays nice and flat and we can trim off all of the excess. And then once this is upholstered, it's very important that we don't get this dirty. We do not mess this up because if we do, then we have to tear it all out and do it all over again. This fabric being very expensive, that is not something I wanted to do. So it was very important for me that once all this uh, base traps and all the framing was upholstered that I was super, super careful uh, with all the steps moving forward. So I'm getting any 45 degree cuts on this trim cut. These are the long pieces that are going to trim up top and bottom of our bulkhead base trap. And I applied this exact same 45 degree cut right on the edge of some of the vertical pieces of trim for the base trap sidewalls right where it meets the wall on a 45 degree angle and right where that base trap 45 degree meets the acoustic wall section. Um, I'm cutting this 45 degree angle just to make sure our trim sits nice and flush against the fabric and nice and flush against the wall and flush against the bulkhead. There you can see that 45 degree angle that I cut on my miter saw, how that's gonna line up super nicely with the top of the ceiling and the bottom of the bulkhead there. So I can get that tacked in and once I have that top and bottom trim piece, or left and right rather, on this bulkhead, then we can add our long trim pieces and you'll see how that 45 degree angle meets up nicely as well. These are all of those small finishing touches. You could trim this without the 45 degree angle. It just wouldn't give you that as nice of a professional finished product. Uh, so it's important for us to just take our time with this step. You can see how that 45 degree angle meets up nicely with the ceiling and nicely with the bottom of the bulkhead and how that trim just gets rid of all those staple marks, gets rid of the edge of the fabric that we cut off and just caps off all of our staple marks and just gives us a nice final built-in look to these base traps. That's the goal here is to make these base traps look like they are part of the control room rather than something that is just installed or hung on the wall. These are a permanent installation part of the room and you can see we've achieved that through trimming up this bulkhead base trap. Now we're gonna go ahead and apply the same principles to these base trap walls. Uh, so I'm getting my top and bottom trim pieces done there and really taking my time, making sure I don't nudge these trim pieces against that fabric in the center, uh, cause that would smudge the fabric and we do not want that. So getting everything tacked in, you can see that vertical piece has that 45 degree angle cut. So it meets up nicely with where the base trap corner is. And this piece where it meets the wall has that 45 degree cut as well. So that way it might sits nice and flush against the wall. And just that final end cap piece, I'm getting, I'm just scribing it and cutting it to size on the table saw and tacking that in. There's the first acoustic wall and base trap combination all trimmed up. You can see how that looks. And same way with our bulkhead base trap. This is a nice finished product. Looks like it's a built in part of the wall, part of the construction of the room. And that is exactly what we were going for here for this client. And there you can see the left side is all done as well. Now there's just some small trim pieces left to go. And that concludes this chapter. Seven. This is the custom wall plate box. So here you can see this client got this built. This is gonna be mounted in the live room side. So that way the client can have all of his in and outs easily routed to the live floor uh, between the control rooms so that they can set up whatever microphones and do whatever routing they need to do while they are recording in the live room um, and have everything routed nice and neatly into the control room. So to mount this custom plate, we are building a custom box to house it and then we will mount that box to the wall and then the client is gonna go ahead and do all of the soldering himself to get all of the connections finished up. So I'm cutting my nice 45 degree miters. This custom wall plate box was a 13 inch square. So that's the size that I made this box. I'm using the exact same one by four pine that we used to trim um, around this job. And there you can see my plate fits nicely into there. I added a top and bottom brace to add some structural rigidity to this box. And it's also gonna give us somewhere to screw the box right into the wall. So you can see the front and back side of that box. Now I'm just cutting up some scrap one by two um, as to act as a rail, uh, just like you would in a traditional rack system. But I'm adding this rail around all sides of the box 
and I'm recessing that rail uh, just about an eighth of an inch. I used the just the width of my construction pencil and that is just going to give us a nice little recessed edge for that wood plate to sit within. There you can see how that looks and I'm going to go ahead and stain this entire box to make sure that everything looks nice and professional. We're going to sand it, stain it, do that exact same stain, clear coat, so everything matches up nicely with the wall and with the rest of this entire build. So just going around, making sure everything is sanded, making sure my miter joints have any wood filler if it needs. And now I'm applying the stain. And I'm, I'm staining that interior rail as well, just so that if there are any just small millimeters where that rail is poking out after the client screws the plate into the rails, that it'll have the exact same stain just so that your eye isn't drawn to any natural unstained wood in this room here. Now, this is the conduit piping that we are gonna add so that we can route all of our wiring inside. It is gonna exit the wall right there. We're gonna drill our holes and right there is where we're gonna mount the plate box. So I'm using my conduit. We used a two inch uh, conduit pipe here and I'm getting that just scribed onto the wall where it meets, <clears throat> where it meets the wall right there. And then I can go ahead with my drill and just get that all drilled out. So I'm using just a small piece of pipe there to scribe it on. Now, right here where I drilled, right where it met the wall, I did hit stud. So we decided to just go right by an inch or so, uh, just to get in between the studs, because of course we don't wanna, we can't route wire through stud. Uh, we need a nice direct hole through this wall to the live room side. I'm using my spade bit. Uh, just to get that hole to be larger so that we have enough room for all of our cabling to go through. This client had quite a bit of cabling to route because uh, he has 16 channels of XLR. He has, I believe, four channels of guitar in and out. He has a couple headphone jacks. He has an HDMI. Um, so we wanted to make sure we have plenty of room to route this cabling. And these holes here ended up being the, just the perfect amount of space within the conduit piping and the wall itself so that we can route all of this cabling through the wall for the client. And this client is soldering all of his connections himself so that works out perfectly. We just need to get this box mounted for him and route all of the wiring and run the conduit, get that all mounted to the wall nicely. So I just screwed these in with some wood screws and there you can see where our cabling will go into the box here. And I used my laser to make sure that that box is nice and straight. And now we can get ready uh, to run the wiring through this conduit and screw it into the wall. So here's all of our wiring and I just labeled everything to make sure that as we route this through on both sides, the client knows exactly what wiring is for what. He has eight channels of A cable, eight channels of B cable for all of his XLRs. And just making sure everything's labeled. Uh, this is the most critical step at this point uh, to make sure everything's labeled properly. Because um, last thing we want to do is make it harder for this client. Uh, we want to make sure this whole process runs nice and smoothly. So we're getting everything bundled together, uh, just nice and neatly, so it fits through this conduit nicely. And we are pre-running all of this cable through the conduit before we hang this on the wall, just to make our lives a million times easier. This would be so much harder to string each cable through, um, through all those bends if we were to do this after mounting the conduit to the wall. Uh, so I'm just using the the little clips that come with this conduit piping. I had to modify this middle one to sit up nicely against that bottom of the acoustic wall that we framed out there, but I'm getting those screwed in, uh, just using a little washer and screw. There's the client mic there, just getting started on getting all the wiring ready for soldering. And you can see how we ran all of that conduit around the room, how it's mounted underneath the wall nice and neatly, so it's out of sight. And then it, comes out right underneath that front window so we can mount all into the rear of his desk. Here is the very final chapter. This is just all the little finishing touches to provide a nice finishing touch to the job. Here I cut a 45 degree angle on this piece of wood trim here. This is going to butt up against the wall and it's going to hide this wiring. You can see I did a little notch there for the controller of the LED lights and you can see that 45 degree cut meets nicely up against the wall. This is all just these small little final detail touches that really provide our client with a nice finished product that we are going for here at Sound Headquarters and of course our clients want. 
Um, they don't want any wires hanging out, looking unprofessional. Uh, we do not want any of this to look DIY. Um, so we want to make sure that we do these little small touches just around the whole job, just to make sure that we are leaving this client happy and making sure that we do our job to the best of our ability as well. I'm using my square here uh, just to make sure that this little controller I'm, is peel and stick, but I'm using my square to make sure that, that this controller is stuck on the wall in a nice 90 degree angle. Um, all of this little finishing touches stuff, we wanna take our time, really plan it out. Um, really not worth rushing anything at this point. The job has already taken us a long time. It doesn't make sense to rush any of this small final touches stuff. We want to make sure we really get the exact look that we are going for. So once that's stuck to the wall, you can see it just gives us a nice clean edge hiding our wire there. And we also added some conduit around the baseboard where it met up with the electrical outlet there. Not sure if I have clips of that in this video, but that is something we did for this client. There you can see we're just getting that panel back on and providing us with a nice finished look and super cool with how this lighting lights up these panels around the live room here. Especially when the clients rehearse at night, it's gonna give them a super cool environment to jam in. There's a little look around the room. Now we're getting some last panels installed into the control room. These panels are mounted right behind where the client is gonna have his monitors. Uh, so these panels were important uh, for the client just to have some sort of absorption behind his monitoring system. So we just built these to size, got them upholstered. We're just using flush mount hangers to hang these up. Now we're getting ready to mount the mixed position clouds. So exact same process as we did in the live room here, getting all of our hardware mounted. We are mounting three of these panels to make up a six foot by four foot mix position cloud. And we're going in with wire tie and I can use my the threading on all of the screw hooks to adjust these clouds. That way everything sits nice and flat and level with each other. And then I wire tie the clouds together to make sure that they stay nice and consistent and there's no gaps in between the panels. I'm using a wood filler here on the long butt joints of the base trap. Here is the acoustic felt. Uh, these are just hex acoustic felt self-adhesive tiles we got on Amazon. The client wanted to have some sort of absorption on the lower part of the live room ceiling bulkhead here. And to keep this as low profile as possible, we decided to use these hex tiles and we used a nice light gray just to add one more contrasting color and we wanted it to be a neutral color within this live room. And I'm just doing a random pattern uh, with these hex tiles getting them just self, they're self adhesive. So they just peel and stick and just getting the majority of this bulkhead section where the band will be rehearsing stuck onto the ceiling there. And just taking my time, I'm using a piece of the hex tile that still has the sticker on um, just as like a template for when I add the one that does have the sticker. That way I know that these are all going to line up nicely as we work forward and stick them on. We don't want any weird inconsistencies or gaps, so it's important that we take our time with every single hex tile. There was a little look at how it all looked. This is once the wood filler is dried, we sanded it and did touch up stain and clear coat anywhere we had to. And we also did some white quarter round trim around the door casing, around anywhere that we had the wood cladding meeting up with the existing casing. We did full touch-up trim paint of semi-gloss trim paint around the whole room everywhere we had to. Uh, we touched up the ceiling with, uh, with flat white paint anywhere we had to. And here's a look at the finished product. This is the very finished studio, how we left it with the client. You can see all of the wiring uh, landing nicely right behind where the client is gonna have his desk. So all of that cabling will be able to be routed all into his interface and all of his IO and his patch bay on his desk and he will do all of the soldering onto the wall plate side. And that is a nice finishing look at this whole project. The client was so happy with this job. He said that we went way above what he was expecting um, for the budget that we had for this build and just for working with me in general. I'm super thankful for him for trusting me with this video 
or with this build rather, and for you guys for watching this video. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Daniel from Sound Headquarters. Please subscribe for more. Thank you. Peace out.